GTS-65 and GTS-80 global transmission sleeves are shipped pre-cut with a pre-attached CLH closure. The sleeve adhesive is protected from contamination by an inner liner. The joint completion system also uses an epoxy primer. A detailed product installation guide identifies the important steps to properly install a heat shrinkable sleeve and is shipped with each box of sleeves. These installation instructions are intended as a guide for standard products, so consult your Canusa representative for specific projects or unique applications. A heat shrinkable sleeve is made of a cross-linked and stretched polyethylene backing coated with a heat activated adhesive. The sleeve is pre-cut to fit the specific pipe diameter and has a pre-attached closure strip. Always follow the storage and safety guidelines when using the products. This will ensure that the products will be in their best condition when applied. Using proper equipment is important. Torches, clean knives, and rollers that are in good condition, plus calibrated temperature measuring instruments, all make installation of sleeves easy, fast, and done right. Canusa recommends a short-handled short tip with a maximum 400,000 BTU torch size. Contact your Canusa representative for your nearest approved torch dealer. Canusa also recommends the use of induction or infrared preheating equipment for pipe diameters greater than 760 millimeters or 30 inches. Ensure that the mainline coating edges are beveled to at least 30 degrees to create a smooth transition from the cutback to the coating. If there is the presence of oil, grease, or other surface contaminants, clean the exposed steel and adjacent pipe coating with an approved solvent cleanser. Warm the joint area up to 40 to 50 degrees Celsius before grit blasting to remove any surface moisture or volatile contaminants. During high winds or cold ambient conditions, such as below 15 degrees Celsius, pre-warm the joint area to 70 degrees Celsius before grit blast. Thoroughly clean the weld area with a sand or grit blaster to near white metal SISSA 2.5 or equivalent. Abrade the mainline coating adjacent to the weld area to a distance 50 millimeters beyond the sleeve width. Using a dry, grease, and lint-free cloth, wipe clean or air blast the steel and coated areas to remove foreign materials. If necessary, provide additional heat to ensure the surface temperature is 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Follow the preparation, mixing, and application instructions provided with the supplied Canusa two-component epoxy pack. Using the applicator pad supplied or an approved applicator, apply the mixed epoxy to a uniform thickness of 100 to 150 microns or as specified on all exposed bare metal plus 10 millimeters onto the adjacent pipe coating. Using the appropriate propane torch, induction heating, or infrared heating equipment, preheat the applied epoxy primer to the required temperature as indicated in the product installation guide. Do not use an intense flame on the mainline coating, and if a film develops on the coating because of overheating, use a surface abrasion tool to remove it. Check temperature to ensure that the preheat temperature has been obtained on the entire pipe circumference. This preheat will substantially cure the epoxy and ensure proper flow and bonding of the sleeve adhesive. Ensure that the epoxy primer is dry to the touch prior to sleeve installation. Partially remove the release liner and gently heat the underlap approximately 150 millimeters from the edge. Center the sleeve on the pipe ensuring that it equally overlaps onto each edge of the factory coating. Remove the remaining release liner while wrapping the sleeve loosely around the pipe. 
gently heat the top of the underlap, the adhesive side of the overlap, and the green side of the closure until it becomes glossy. Press the overlap and closure firmly into place. Gently heat the top of the closure and pat it down with a gloved hand. Repeating this procedure, move from one side to the other and smooth any wrinkles out by gently working them outward from the center of the closure with a roller. Using the appropriate size torch, begin at the center of the sleeve and heat circumferentially around the pipe using broad strokes. If utilizing two torches, operators will need to work on opposite sides of the pipe. Continue heating from the center toward one end of the sleeve until recovery is complete. In a similar manner, heat and shrink the remaining side. Shrinking has been completed when the adhesive begins to ooze at the sleeve edges all around the circumference. Finish shrinking the sleeve with long horizontal strokes over the entire surface to ensure a uniform bond. While the sleeve is still hot and soft, use a hand roller to gently roll the sleeve surface and push any trapped air up and out of the sleeve. Continue the procedure by also firmly rolling the closure with long horizontal strokes from the weld outwards. Visually inspect the installed sleeve and make sure that the sleeve is in full contact with the steel joint, that the adhesive flowed beyond both sleeve edges, and that no cracks or holes are in the sleeve backing. After shrinking is complete, allow the sleeve to cool prior to lowering and backfilling. To prevent damage to the sleeve, use selected backfill material or a suitable shield for protection 